Hello students, today you're going to take notes on magnetism and electricity. Go ahead and set up your notebook. This is a good time to pause it. And this video will be a short lecture first, followed by time for you to copy the notes. Okay, let's begin. In the 1820s, a scientist named Orsted saw that when he had a compass nearby and there was a circuit, the compass needle would move. When the electric circuit was complete, it created a magnetic field. So in this image, you can see how a magnetic field that develops on the outside of a wire. And that's why we call things like electromagnets is because, um, or um, electromagnetic radiation, as we learned in class before, because it's a combination of electricity and magnetism. They are uh, one and the same force. What's the difference between a regular magnet and, let's say, uh, magnetism that's created from, a, um, let's say, an electromagnet? There's a few differences, but when it comes to the magnetic field, it's stronger at the poles, just like in a regular magnet, and weaker at the sides. But one of the differences is that electromagnets can be turned off. And regular magnets usually have a, a set amount of magnetism. So what is an electromagnet? An electromagnet is when you use electricity to create a temporary magnet. For example, here, um, if you have a coiled wire, you actually can uh, multiply the amount of magnetic force it has. And this has various uses as we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and if you have a, a, core, a core, like an iron core, in the middle, you create something called an electromagnet, which is much more powerful than just a loop wire. So an electromagnet like this one has an iron core and loops, which causes the magnetic field to be increased. As I mentioned before, one of the advantages is that the magnet can be turned on and off, and that has various uses. But as you can see, when the circuit is complete, these uh, iron magnet um, paper clips are attracted to the electromagnet. So how is this useful? Well, let's say at the junkyard, they have huge electromagnets that are very powerful. They can pick up tons of uh, weight or they can actually pick up whole cars and move them from one place to another. And they have the advantage that it can turn on and off to move things. Depending how electricity and magnetism have a relationship, you can actually do things like create motors. So you can use copper wire and magnets and have a circuit. And between that relationship between electricity and magnetism, you can create, create force like in this drill. Or like this um, RC car. So these kind of um, toys and equipment use the property of electromagnets to do work. We also use um, magnets to create electricity. So if it wasn't for magnetism, we wouldn't be able to generate electricity. So Michael Faraday discovered this relationship, just like when you have a circuit that affects a compass because it creates magnetism, you can use a magnet like this one to create electricity. This is actually a lab today. Um, a digital lab that's uh, part of today's la uh, steps in the blog. So go ahead and try that. It's an option between that and a, a different activity. So check it out. Try it out. It is worth five points of um, lab points. All right, that's it for the mini lecture. And we talked about the relationship between magnetism and electricity, how we use it to generate force, and we can use it to make electricity as well. That's how most of our electricity is generated. Okay, so here's some of the terms we talked about. Go ahead and take a few minutes to write the notes and then write your summary and advanced question. Have a great day.